Good evening, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, August the 11th, 2023. I am terribly sorry this video is getting released much later than it should be on the tropics. The reason why for that is I am getting prepared for one of the biggest infrastructure projects probably in several years in my backyard, putting up a new weather station, making it much higher. And so there's a lot of planning uh, that is going into this. And so that is why these videos may be a little later than they should be. And it's just all the measuring, everything coming together to make this possible. So I do apologize by that, but at least this video is going to reach your guys' eyes, hopefully before you go to bed tonight. So looking at the tropical Atlantic right now, there's really not a lot going on. We have quite a bit of Saharan dry air. We talked about this in yesterday's video, how this dry air is leading to, well, not much convection at all. Barely any cloud cover. A lot of nimbostratus is all you're seeing in the low levels. That means there is some low level moisture, but the deep layer is very dry. Another indication we can see is a pretty substantial outbreak of Saharan dust. We can see all this brown here on the screen. See that? You can see it on satellite. I love satellite imagery from Dr. Levi Cowan's site. And all that dust is actually moving off of Africa and it is moving off towards the west and it is going to be impacting much of this portion of the main development region in the days to come. And that's going to lead to a suppression of thunderstorm convection for the time being. But we all know that's not going to last forever. And it's only a matter of time when the light switch will be flipped. Now, there's no literal light switch out there in the Atlantic. It's just a, um, it's just basically another way of saying that, yep, the season's going to turn on quickly. All right, so we can see in the Atlantic, pretty quiet. There's just not a lot going on over the next seven days. If we look at the Eastern Pacific Basin, whole different story. We have three areas to watch. There's um, the one out there in the Western Eastern Pacific that has a 60% chance of tropical formation, nearly a high chance with that one. And then we have another one, uh, this is actually dubbed INVEST 98, um, 98E because E stands for Eastern Pacific. And so that has a 50-80% chance of tropical formation in the next two to five, uh, two to seven days. But the bigger one that we're really worrying or a bit of concern is the one off towards its east. This is an area, another area that's disturbance number three. This will develop by the middle to the end of next week. And I'm so confident about this that we could even see a major hurricane out of this in the next 7 to 10 days. This has a 70% chance of formation in a week from now. So that is a very high chance. And this system itself, this disturbance, could even bring some impacts towards portions of Mexico and even for Baja, California. And in, in extreme cases might even bring some moisture up my way in a couple of weeks. Well, we'll see about that, maybe sooner or later. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Now, looking at the Gulf of Mexico, water temperatures, I've said this too many times. In many of my previous videos, it's just ridiculous. This is really, really bad. All right, I'm not going to try to stutter a lot on this, but folks... I mean, I hope you got your hurricane preparations in place right now. I hope you're ready for what might be a very busy season or what will likely be a very busy season. Here is why. The, the Gulf of Mexico, I can almost say, and I don't like using hyper-optic or hyper-hyping uh, like words, but I mean, the Gulf is on fire. I mean, it's not literally on fire. It's not up in flames or anything, but the water temperatures are very warm. In other words, let's see. Like the 31 Celsius extends really far out to sea. I mean, the entire Gulf under 31 Celsius, this is filling in quite quickly. And then here is our 32 Celsius all in here. All this orange and red that is 90 degrees, almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit in water. 
even off the coast of Louisiana. It has cooled off there a bit because of some upwelling, but I'm telling you, it it doesn't matter. 26 Celsius or greater is enough to support powerful to violent hurricanes. Now, when you get 32 Celsius, that's just more gas. That's just more, oops, bumped the mic. It's just more juice, more fuel, octane fuel for these systems. And I'm telling you, right now, it is ugly. Putting it that way. All right, I think I've stuttered too many times with that. Another way to look at this is from the University of Miami, indicating water temperatures greater than 89 degrees Fahrenheit, 90s, even some mid-90s along the coast of Florida. Yep, some of you are complaining of how hot and humid it is. You can blame the sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. It is just ridiculous. Beyond sickening, beyond terrifying when you think about it, because you know what's coming. If anything takes full advantage of the waters in the Gulf, in the Northwestern Caribbean, in the Western Atlantic, these systems could explode very quickly. And I mean, we can go from a tropical depression to a major hurricane within a couple of days or sooner, even in 12 or 18 hours, okay? I don't think that's gonna happen at all anytime soon, but I just, those waters, yeah, there a lot of lot of latent heat. So when we take a look at the G or the European model, we're just gonna kind of go through this quickly because I want to show you all the Eastern Pacific too on the GFS model. The Euro is going crazy with it too, but we need to look at the GFS in the Eastern. Okay, let's go forward here in time. In the next 60 hours, nothing to worry about. Interesting, we do have a couple of waves here. If things do remain that way, we might have to issue an area to watch uh, on my tropical weather outlooks on Twitter. A broad tropical wave coming off of Africa, bringing a lot of that dust that we were talking about. So that's not going to develop anytime soon. And then pretty stable out here all the way through the next, say, seven or through the next five to eight days or so. Actually, more like five to six days. We have a little bit of a wave here. We have a little bit of a wave here coming off of Africa, and then going forward, I mean, the Euro is going crazy. We have a tropical system here. We got another tropical wave here. We got a tropical wave here too. So yeah, there's still some activity brewing out there in the short to midterm, especially beyond August 20th, when our traditional hurricane or the Atlantic hurricane season typically gets busy. So now let's take a look at the GFS model. And because the Atlantic is so quiet on the GFS, we're actually just going to scoot our butts over to the Eastern Pacific because this is where we are going to be seeing some major business. And I mean major hurricanes, potentially not one, maybe two, maybe three major hurricanes. Yeah, the, the Eastern Pacific is going to get loaded. All right, so let's look at our precipitation um, cause that's my favorite also to look at in the vorticity, of course, with it going forward, there is one of our areas that's the, that's on the NHC. That's the orange area. That's disturbance number two. Okay. And this is disturbance number three and number one. There's three out there that we're watching. So either way you get the, your numbers straight there with the, uh, disturbances. Let's go forward in time. This is day five. Yeah, day five. There's our disturbance. Probably not going to become anything significant. However, mm, yeah, that's strong. Really strong. And look at what it does. 942 millibars. It's been very consistent in recent model runs. I mean, it's been there for a while. So we have a pretty good idea. This could end up being a very big problem for a lot of residents that live across Puerto Vallarta. Um, I've been there many times. Mazalan, Mexico could be really bad there, uh, including for um, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Yeah, might want to watch this one a little closely because, yeah, there's going to be some pretty intense rainfall with that. Maybe some breezy winds associated with that. 
bigger in nature, not so compact, so it's going to impact a bigger area wherever it's moving into. I mean, this thing really doesn't fall apart very much. This remains pretty healthy through the next 10 days or so once it develops. And then maybe another one thereafter, maybe another major hurricane. So the Eastern Pacific definitely going to light up its activity quite a bit. And yeah, when that's active, usually the Atlantic is quiet. But I'm telling you folks, things are going to switch. Once the Eastern Pacific winds down, I have a feeling we're going to start seeing more activity get going here in the Atlantic. And yeah, look at all that moisture there. Just getting piled up here. According to the GFS, yeah, look at that. Man, that's a lot of moisture really in place, including for the Northwestern Caribbean. So yeah, we, we, we've got our eyes. We got our binoculars on. And we're going to be just looking at all of these systems. I hope I made you laugh there. I hope I did. All right, but otherwise... Unfortunately, I'm not going to be laughing as much because, again, a lot on my dinner plate to think about going into the weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Again, that big weather station project, it is necessary to keep my weather station in full working order. Because at the end of the day, it does transmit weather to the National Weather Service. Yeah, my weather station, you can look it up, go to Weather Underground and type in countryside grapes i believe or it's ethan b i think you should be able to find it yeah i mean it's got to get some upgrades and it's going to be 50 feet high when things go 50 feet high it requires a lot of guy wire and a lot of maintenance and a lot of planning so yes i'm stressed out about that but i'm gonna we're gonna get through this just as we are as we have ever done all right but i just wanted to let you know that all right. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, sharing, and liking the video if you did enjoy it. Sorry to cut this one short. After all, this video is going to be released much later than usual.